Steve Adubato here at uh, NJIT at the Jim Wise Theater. It is our honor to introduce two very special guests. We have our good friend Jonathan Shupi, journalist and author of a uh, compelling book called A Chance to Win. And he is here with uh, a guy or people are meeting for the first time on PBS, Rodney Mason, coach, the Newark Eagles of the Jackie Robinson South Ward Little League. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. It's a great story, compelling story. Um, who is this guy? Now, you're a report. We've known you from the Star Ledger, your work right. as a journalist for a long time. Who is this guy? And then I'll let him tell his own version. He's an amazing human being, Rodney Mason. He is somebody who I came to know as a reporter at the Star Ledger on the crime beat and working on a story in 2005 about a, what the emotional and physical toll of gun violence is. And through a mutual acquaintance, I was introduced to Rodney. And he is a gunshot victim. But that does not define him. And that is what his journey taught me. And what I hope to portray in the book is his journey from gunshot victim and somebody who broke laws to somebody who redeemed himself and worked to help children and improve his neighborhood. So, Ronnie, you, you grew up in the uh, south ward of the right. city of Newark. Right. Uh, tough neighborhood? Tough neighborhood. Crime, crime, violence, violence, drugs all around you? Everything. Yeah. So um, you wind up getting shot in right. a situation that's right. complicated. Right. Not worth going into? All right, we can go into it. Well, the reality is you are um, in a wheelchair. Right. Cannot walk. Cannot walk. You decide you want to be a baseball coach. Right. Of little kids. Right. Why? That was my passion. That was my love. You know, I've been... Um, I started off playing Little League Baseball in the early 70s when baseball was real big. Mm. And um, I fell in love with it. It was something that kept me out of trouble, kept me off the streets. And after that, I got into coaching, you know, to, to um, help the kids. And Hold on, that, that's not you. Yeah, that's me right that's there. That's you as a kid? Okay. Yeah, that's You're me a real ball player. Right, a real ball player. And um, I took my experience to help the kids in the city of North. Um, far as with baseball and far as with life in general. Mm. And so far, so good. It worked out, you know. How many years have you been doing it? Um, it's going on approximately uh, uh, 10, years. Yeah. 10 years. 10 years. So it's interesting. So, so you're dealing drugs. Right. You're on the streets. Right. Trying to find a way. Trying to find a way. What do you tell these kids? How do you talk to these kids about... I mean, it's easy to say, don't do what I did. That's not enough. No, that's not enough. So what do you tell them? I lead by example. I lead by example and show them and tell them that that's not the way to go. And, you know, if they, and if they wind up doing what I did, it can either get worse, it could be worse, rather, or it can um, be death. You know, it's either or. How common is death in the neighborhood? Off, I mean, very common. It's very common. Every, you know, people dying every day. People die every day in the city, I know. So you meet this guy. Right. And he tells you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach baseball. I want to be involved in Little League, right? Uh, by the way, baseball, as a big baseball fan with young boys who play baseball, and, and sub Montclair is not a suburb, suburb. You know, they're real suburbs. Montclair is an urban, suburban suburb. But baseball is not huge in the city, let's just say. Right. It's tough to find fields. It's tough to get kids involved. He tells you that. Do you buy into it right away? No, I mean, we had known each other for a few years, so I knew I got this general sense that he wanted to do something to turn his life around and find new purpose. And what I didn't know was his history with baseball personally and his love for it and what it meant to him. All I heard was, I want to coach baseball, and it sounded crazy to me. Right. Um, given um, Rodney's, uh, the obstacles that he'd have to go through to even get out on the field. I'm intimidated as a father of small children with the idea of coaching baseball. Um, my first thought was what anyone else would think is, how is he going to do this? How is he physically going to do this? You mean in a wheelchair? This? Yeah, and also just uh, you need a lot of experience, um, not only with the game, but also how to deal with kids, how to deal with parents. It's no small matter, coaching. What happened when you saw him with, with I kids was uh, and the parents? I, I, I was glad that I brought a notebook in my back pocket, so I immediately started taking notes. It was incredible. What did you see? It was um, crowds of kids, <laughs> most of whom did not know even what arm they used to throw with, let alone have a glove. They just were there because there was an opportunity to do something with, a lot of them call, 
Rodney Uncle Rock or Coach Rock. He's, he's a figure in the neighborhood that all, a lot of little kids look up to, and they just came out in droves. And I immediately saw, as a storyteller, that the, something special was happening here. What's the story? What is that story, and how much does it go beyond baseball? It goes way beyond baseball. What is it? It's, you know, it's survival, you know. It's survival kids trying to be, you know, they're trying to survive out there. And people, you know, the, the kids now, they're so vulnerable to gangs and a lot of drug activities. You know, I'm just trying to give a, a positive perspective in, in, instead of the negative perspective, um, perspective that's going on in the city of North. And I'm just trying to carry the kids. I'm just trying to carry them on my back, you know. So if someone says, devil's advocate, someone who's negative, right, right. well, that's nice. You got a few kids playing baseball. How much impact do you really have, you say? I'm happy to say that there's two ways you can look at how to improve a, a city like Newark. Yeah. One is the big personalities, uh, Mayor Booker, or Mayor Baraka, or Ray Chambers. And then there are the hyper-local efforts that are happening in communities, like what Rodney is doing, that arguably matter as much as the big names and the big fundraising and um, grants and political opportunities big that are talked about. Yes, big buildings downtown. There are, when you go into the neighborhoods, Rodney is one of many people who are doing things on a very small but very local and tangible level with kids trying to change their communities. And my answer to that question is, if there are more Rodneys, things would get a lot better are in there? York. There are, do, do, yes. Do, do you think there are others? a significant number of other folks out there who care to the degree you care and are having a different kind of impact, but mm -hmm. powerful impact on those kids that we're talking about who are dealing with such extraordinary challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite a few. It's quite a few out there that's doing what I'm doing or even doing more, you know. Um, Why don't we pay enough attention to them? Um, do we care enough? Do we, everybody else, outside of your community? I mean, I was born on the other end of the city in the North Ward, right? Okay. You know, and uh, in Newark, for those who know Newark, the Newark, the North Ward and the South Ward were two wards in the city about um, six miles away, but about 600 miles away, if you know the city, because neighborhoods didn't connect with each other. But for those who are outside the city, mm -hmm. do you think we care enough about those kids in the city? You know, that's a tough question. You know, I don't want to say yeah, and I don't want to say no. Do you think we think enough about their futures? Um, that it's our responsibility as well? I think you do. I think. You think we do? Yeah. You think we do? I think that we have a long way to go. Um, I think that was the purpose, what I hope to achieve by writing Rodney's story and writing the book, is to have people not only in Newark, but also, most importantly, outside Newark, people who don't know anything about Newark, to understand what's happening. And do what? The struggles that are and happening. Do what? So they say, no, isn't that great what this Rodney's doing? He's right. terrific. He's right. a great guy. Right. He's a hero. And they, then they do what? You can do a number of things. <clears throat> if, if you're spurred to some sort of activism, one is to support people, not if Rodney in, in particular, but also just the general effort to bring more recreation That's or right. arts or learning opportunities to kids. You can do something, volunteer or give money or... In some, find some way in the limitations of your own life to help. Or you can do it yourself in your own community, depending on where you live. Hopefully, I believe, Rodney's story resonates and inspires people to not only get involved with Newark, but also get involved in their own communities or whatever inner city is near where they live. What do you want to happen out of this book? Um, great things. Yeah. Great things? Great things. What do you want for these kids? Um, Kids that you love. It's the best quality of life that I can, you know, that, it, that, that can be um, offered to them. You know, they deserve it. You they know? do, don't they? They deserve it. Yeah, they deserve it. They deserve what all of our kids right. have, right? Right. Listen, I say this to some people. Right. I'm going to say it to you right now. Okay. On behalf of everyone at, uh, in the public television community. Okay. Uh, thank you for what you do every day. And I ask you, uh, you know, as a devil's advocate question, why don't we spend enough time focusing on people like you? Um, we, right. 
we'll do as much as we can to celebrate the work that you and others are doing through this series at Norco at Crossroads. And I want to thank you, our friend, uh, a great journalist like Jonathan, who, who brought this to our attention. The book is called A Chance to Win, an ex, uh, ex-con Little League team and the quest to redeem an American city, Jonathan Shupi. Um, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, thank you Rodney. Thank you. Keep it up. Right. This guy's got a crazy grip. I can't even explain <laughs> it to you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back from NJIT. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by NJIT, Investors Bank, Verizon, Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, RWJ Barnabas Health, and by the Northward Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been produced in cooperation with Fios One News.